Hi, I'm Larry Puckett. Today I want to share with you four different ways to create the mortar lines for the bricks in this structure here. So, let's go ahead and get started with the four different ways I've tried. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, so what I did, I took the boiler, the uh, Cambria City Boiler House kit uh, that I uh, previously showed you, I believe, in the overview, and I painted it with a uh, red oxide primer, except for one side. One side, I painted it a cement gray, uh, and let me show you which paints I use, because I use rattle cans or spray cans. The red oxide that I use is a red oxide primer from Ace Hardware, so it's readily available in the United States. I'm sure you guys in uh, the UK and, and other countries can find a red oxide aerosol primer. I use several other colors though. I've got about three or four different uh, cans of uh, different colors uh, like this that I will use on different uh, brick structures or I might even mix them on the same structure just to get a little variability. The other thing I said, I used a uh, a cement color here uh, for the mortar lines. And for that, I used a Krylon uh, paint, and it is matte sand dollar. So I think this does a very good job of uh, capturing the look of an off-white uh, mortar. So those are the paints that I use. And what I did was, I just took this out in the uh, driveway yesterday and sprayed it on three sides, masked it and sprayed the uh, sand dollar paint on here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try dry brushing on a red oxide paint here uh, to uh, bring back the color of the brick and hopefully we'll be able to leave the mortar down in the mortar lines in the process. I've never tried this. Uh, I think it's very popular in the UK and I know Pico recommends it for their buildings. So I wanted to give this one a try. On the other sides, I'm going to try uh, different methods. One, I'm going to try using a, um, a dilute uh, cement color, and we'll just flow that over top of the red brick and let it flow down into the mortar lines themselves. And once it's had a, a little bit of time to start to dry out and set up, I'll go back over this with a cloth and try to buff off and remove any of the um, uh, of that cement color paint from the brick itself and leave it down in the mortar lines. Now I'm going to start with the uh, red dry brushing technique and what I'm using is uh, Badger AccuFlex paint. This is light Tuscan oxide red and you can see it uh, comes very very close when it dries anyway to the uh, red oxide primer that I used on the other sides. So I'm just going to try this dry brushing technique and we'll give it a try. I'm going to start with this raised brick here. So you can see it does a pretty effective job in that kind of situation. Like I said, I've never tried this technique before so I'm sure that once you've done it a few times, your technique could improve. I must admit, it's doing a better job on the raised brick than I kind of expected. Now I'm going to start working down in some of these other areas down in here. that are harder to get into, and as I expected, they are difficult to get into. And areas like the top of this raised brick arch, that is very difficult. Not having much luck there. Let me see if I can even this out some here. Just use my scrubbing technique with my dry brushing.
Okay, now I need to get a little bit more here. And we'll get that wiped off. Okay, now let's see what we can do here on the main area. I think that once it's weathered and once it's dried and uh, completely weathered, that's going to even it out quite a bit. Let's go ahead and try a different method now. Okay, the next uh, thing I want to try, we'll start on this side here. Um, I made up a mix of concrete and uh, light gray uh, because the, the concrete was a little bit on the tan side, so I wanted something that was going to be a little bit lighter. And we'll see how this looks in a minute. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and put it on this. I think I'm just going to limit it right here uh, to this side for now. And we'll see how this works. So I'm going to flow it down into the lines and we'll see how it does. Let it go down in there and dry some. Oh, that's an open area there where the smokestack used to go. I'm going to let that dry for just a minute while I clean my brush off and then we'll get back and take a look at it. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, trying to buff off some of this before it dries too far. You have to be careful not to overdo the buffing because you can end up getting some of your uh, mortar lines rubbed out there. But at this point, this is my preferred method over the dry brushing the red brick in. The main problem is being, not being able to get down in to these areas down like in here between these raised bricks and clean that out. Let me see if I can pull it out with the brush a little bit. And then we can come back and clean it out. Now this is the method that I have used the most. And let me get that cleaned out on that side too. The main thing that I don't like about this method, it's kind of difficult to get the uh, hazy uh, coating of uh, cement colored paint off of the brick without actually getting down in there and pulling out some of your mortar lines in the process. On a blank wall, like this one right here, I'm going to apply an India ink wash. And all this is, is India ink uh, dissolved in some alcohol. It's probably something on the order of about 10 to 1, but it's nothing scientific. It's just, I put enough in there until I got what I liked. And this has lasted me for a number of years. So, and you have to use uh, real India ink because in order to get the kind of coating that you want and that you need in order to do this, it takes India ink because some of the other inks don't work the same way. So let me go ahead and we will get some of that on the brush here and we're going to apply it uh, to this area, out to this wall here. So you can see the uh, ink pigment is flowing down into the lines quite well and building up the same way that a lot of dirt and grime and soot uh, would do in a real building, a real industrial structure. And this should dry fairly quickly because it is a, uh, like I said, it is alcohol, isopropyl alcohol 
uh, that I've used. This is the uh, side that had just the red brick color applied and then the weathering. Now the one thing about this is you'll notice it gives sort of a hazy color to the surface. So uh, let's see if we can take care of that a little bit. So this gives a really nice gritty look if that's what you're out to do, particularly for an industrial structure of some kind, a factory, a gas works, anything that's going to be exposed to a lot of really heavy dirt and soot and grime. And you can see the way when it's wet anyway, it makes those lines pop. Now the next method I, that I want to share with you uses joint compound. So this is a plaster uh, type compound. It's a gypsum plaster. It's used for making the smooth joints uh, on gypsum wallboard or sheetrock. And it comes in nice little containers like this or even five gallon buckets. So let's zoom in down here on the workbench and take a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to work with this side right here so that we can work with a nice smooth area. And I have some of the joint compound on this coffee stir. So let's just smear that on. And we want to work it down into the mortar lines between the bricks here. And I'm going to put some on this arch up here. And we'll come down the side. And this is going to be a pain in the neck to get out of these crenulations. But let's see how it's going to work. that smoothed in like that real good. Okay. And then, once you get it lathered on, then let's go ahead and go over it with our finger. And that way we can remove some of it in advance. Well, I've got all five fingers gooped up now. Let me get a towel. Okay, so I got my fingers cleaned off a little bit so we can finish doing this. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back and see how it worked. Now, because it's such a thin layer, it's going to dry fairly quickly, although these deeper areas are not. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we just use a piece of paper towel and wipe the surface of the bricks clean. If you get any variations, you can just come back with your finger and move it around in there. But you want some variation in here anyway, just to give it uh, that natural look. Okay, now I'm going to take a nice stiff bristle, short bristle brush here. Those are maybe a third of an inch long, maybe a half. And I'm just going to use those to get in between these bricks here. Like so. To work it out. Okay, so that cleaned it out fairly nicely. And we can just do one quick rub over it. And this is a dry uh, piece of paper towel, by the way. And then a light wipe over the surface to get some of that surface coating off. And that comes out fairly well. I think that does a pretty good job. I think I like this about as well as the method where I applied a wet uh, mortar mix and uh, wiped it off after it had dried. So one of those two. I also like the, uh, uh, the method that I showed you using the black India ink wash, depending on what kind of situation that your building is located in. So it's a little extra work on these edges with the stiff bristle brush. You can get some of these areas cleaned out fairly nicely. And of course, if you're working with a building that does not have a lot of this fancy brick edging, 
um, it's gonna go a lot faster and easier. Okay, I, I like this one a lot. So this is one of the methods I would use. I do like the method where I apply a thinned uh, acrylic uh, paint wash and then uh, work it out like this. But I also just like the straight India ink uh, wash over the brick because a lot of a lot of those uh, in industrial type buildings, uh, the uh, mortar looks like it's more a, a dark gray or a black anyway. And I don't know if that's because that's what they used originally, or if it's just because of a buildup of soot and dirt and other uh, uh, pollutants that escape from the local uh, smokestacks. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that you find one of these four different methods will work for you on the mortar lines on your brick buildings. So give it a try with your next project and let me know in the comments what you think of each method and what your favorite method is if it's different than this one.